All of the content on YouTube is about how to become a software developer. Nobody tells you exactly how to get to the next level once you're there. I've noticed that a lot of developers float around for a couple of years before they start to get serious about becoming a senior developer or tech lead. Even if you think you are some years away from the next level, you should have a clear idea of what it entails so you don't have a series of false starts that could set your career back. In this video, I'll tell you about the four universal traits of senior engineers and the three things people do that get in the way. More importantly, I'll give you my mental model for how I think about this critical promotion and how to apply it to your situation so you don't get distracted by things that don't matter. Let's go. Meta here. I'm a principal at Amazon with 15 years of experience. I've been promoted through every level of software development engineer. I've conducted 850 technical interviews for all levels and roles, and I've mentored dozens of people in the tech industry. You can disagree with me, but you can't say that I don't know what I'm talking about. Making it to senior engineer is a really big step. For some folks, this represents the highest level you'll attain as an individual contributor. Senior engineers have it nice. They're in the top 10% of the pay band, companies. They get to make the big decisions and set the direction for their team. Teams are often built around strong senior devs. It's a big deal. In this video, I'll use the term senior engineer, senior dev, team lead, and tech lead interchangeably. At Amazon, where I work, it's a really broad range. The top end of senior engineer at Amazon is a staff engineer or principal at Google or Microsoft, from what I can tell. Places like Netflix only hire senior engineers. I'm not going to focus on the top end of senior engineer. I'm going to focus this video on the left boundary, being promoted to senior. Sometimes being promoted is a matter of being at the right place at the right time. This is a perfectly valid and common way people get promoted to senior engineer. However, I'm going to spend time on things that you can control, since circumstantial promotions, like a mass exodus of team members from a project, are just that, circumstantial. Some people get lucky, others create their own luck. The biggest reason people struggle with this promotion is because they conflate leadership with management. Senior developer is the first position that's considered a leadership position, but they typically don't have direct reports. This situation of being a leader without direct authority is not a contradiction if you understand the difference between leadership and management. If you don't understand what I'm getting at, pause the video and think about it for a moment. The way I think about it, leaders set a direction and rally their team to that destination. Managers are concerned with execution. Leaders can be managers, but managers are not leaders by default. Let me give you an example to help illustrate. Suppose you and your team own a backend service and need to deliver a critical API for a large project with a deadline in a month. A prototype of the call was done with the script, and you realize that the latencies for this call are astronomical. Let's say the median latency is 10 seconds, and this is at or slightly above the threshold for what is acceptable. An example of leadership would be to do a deep dive and propose that the API should be an asynchronous one, where the API surface turns into the submission of work and fetching of status and outputs of jobs. This sort of pivot makes the deadline a bit more challenging, but sets your team up for the future as you expect the latencies to increase as extensions are added to the initial functionality. You sell this idea to your team and management. When folks push back, you listen to them and give persuasive data-driven arguments, like how a rewrite after delivery will cost more and lead to more operational burden. Maybe your team doesn't have a good track record of going back and doing things the right way, and there's a large backlog of other items in your roadmap. You write a quick design document and tech spec, break down the tasks and ensure the project is delivered on time, despite the extra scope. You communicate the new direction to adjacent teams, and they have enough time to integrate. An example of management would be to realize that the API will have high latency, but you bias towards fixing it later because this delivery has high visibility and your name attached to it, and you don't want to slip. You implement a clever technique to lower median latencies by two seconds for expected cases. You break the project into components that could be parallelized and follow up and stand up to ensure everybody is doing their part. You get a technically deep team member to do a spike on how the API can be rewritten in the future and start to plan for how you will juggle the roadmap to find time to actually rewrite it, after you launch, of course. If you choose management over leadership, you will think that doing a good job breaking down tasks, being clever, and keeping folks accountable during standup is what senior developers do. They do that, but the critical piece is that they set direction on top of execution. So if you want to be a senior dev, you have to be really opinionated about where your team should be going, and your opinions need to be good. I created this channel because nobody gives the advice that I could have used when I was coming up. If there are topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment. If you find this content useful, please smash that like button and subscribe. 
So you can't just be a good coder or just be an effective Scrum Master. I ask every SDE that wants to be a senior engineer what they think they need to work on. They always say that they want to get more technically deep and to deliver bigger things with their names attached to it. Being technically deep is a universal trait of senior engineers, but not sufficient for getting to the next level. These sorts of responses are missing the point. That's what all SDEs do. All SDEs are technically deep and ship things. When I hear things like this, I think of the Saturday Night Live sketch with Will Ferrell, where a band is recording a song and he continually adds more cowbell to a song that has enough cowbell. Technical chops and project management will only get you so far. For true tech depth, you need a layer in leadership. When you go into a meeting with engineers you've never met before, your level and title are not part of the meeting invitation. But as the meeting progresses, you get to know who the seniors are. That's my litmus test for senior engineer. When folks in the meeting assume someone is a team lead because of the way they carry themselves and the way they talk about things. If folks only realize that they aren't a senior engineer until afterwards when they look them up, that's the key indicator you're ready. The tell is that they demonstrate they are thinking about the long-term consequences of immediate action and communicate a steady state for systems that's healthy, makes sense, and doesn't compound existing operational burden or tech debt. Tech promotions are almost universally anti-Peter Principle. The Peter Principle is the idea that if you're killing it at your current level, you deserve a promotion to the next level. On the surface, this seems like a reasonable way to approach promotions. The problem is that you find the correct level of a person only by promoting them to a level where they become incompetent. Their proper level is therefore one level down. There are no demotions in tech. There are only improvement plans or termination. This leads to a culture where companies are really conservative with promotions, and they only promote folks that are already demonstrating they are operating at the next level. They can still have gaps at the next level, but they have to be clearly demonstrating the next level traits. The second universal trait of senior engineers is the rejection of hyperbolic discounting. Hyperbolic discounting is a fancy term for preferring immediate benefits at the expense of future benefits, even if the future benefit is large. Thus, people discount the size of future returns. There are immense pressures to deliver soon, and the temptation to realize an immediate gain is often a team's default trajectory. But what if you didn't discount the future? What if your time horizon is not the next two sprints, but rather 12 months? This is not unreasonable because you will probably be on the team in 12 months. If your frame is to maximize the benefit of your team's actions over the course of a year, how would that affect today's choices? This brings me to my last point. Living in the future takes time. You have to think about it, a lot. Your ideas can't be half-baked. If you make an impassioned plea to re-architect your systems and your team does it, they're going to expect a payoff. If things are worse, you are in deep doo-doo. So it will take time and energy on top of your existing duties to do deep designs and analysis. If you don't put the time in, you will lose credibility and people will learn to ignore you. So you have to make more time. There are two ways to do this. You can put more hours in on nights and weekends. This seems like an attractive option because you probably have had to put time in on nights and weekends to meet a tight deadline before. You've been doing this since you were in college or your boot camp. But this is an example of hyperbolic discounting. Just apply to your life instead of your team. It's not sustainable. Relationships with family and friends will suffer, and you won't be taking care of yourself. Worse, when you get promoted, you won't have the tools to cope with your new responsibilities. You'll burn out, get divorced, not see your kids, and become so toxic that work will fire you. Don't take this Faustian bargain. You will end up bitter and an unhealthy person. So to find time to think about the future, you need to extract more time from your existing working hours. There is no other healthy way. There's no shortage of advice on how to manage time out there, and I've tried them all. Yes, yes, you should decline all superfluous meetings, set timers, block off time on your calendar, stop going to social media and Reddit, delegate tasks, etc. What you're going to find, though, is that there are tasks that only you can do on your team. You are the only one that knows how to build an old package, or you take all of the interviews for your team, or you're the only one that knows the ins and outs of a legacy piece of code. You're the only one that breaks down tasks well. The trick is to grow others around you. It requires more bandwidth in the short term, but pays off in the long term. That's two birds with one stone. Growing others is the last universal hallmark of a senior engineer. 
You know you've grown others when you've freed up your own bandwidth. If you use the bandwidth to design the future, we've come full circle. Okay, let's recap. Senior engineers have four universal characteristics. One, they're technically deep and deliver on time. Everybody always overfocuses on this aspect though. Make sure this box is checked, but be aware of too much cowbell here. Two, they express their leadership, not management, by demonstrating they are thinking about maximizing the benefits for a longer time horizon. From my estimation, about a year. They uncategorically reject hyperbolic discounting in all of its forms. Three, in order to satisfy one and two, they invent more time. The smartest way to accomplish this is by four, growing others around you to take over their existing responsibilities. The dumbest way to do this is by putting in more hours. Growing others has two benefits. It demonstrates that wherever the engineer is placed, others will get better, but it is also an investment for the future, where the return on investment is more bandwidth to do bigger things. Everybody does better when everybody does better. And that's why I make these videos. Success is not a zero-sum game. None of this stuff should be a secret. My success and your success can occur at the same time. The world needs more kick-ass senior engineers. Senior engineers are worth their weight in gold and are compensated in kind. I hope this video is helpful for you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content, and I will see you next time. Peace.